In Rapid City, South Dakota, the sound of traffic horns and rushing tires, the busiest intersection in town, and a gathering where the signs and the horns say it all. Protecting life. Standing up for life. But not every pro-life, anti-abortion march features a presidential candidate with a very clear message about America's silent holocaust that has killed 60 million children since 1973. Uh, I think every time people in South Dakota have stood up over the years, they have been showing great leadership, uh, both within the state here and around the country, uh, in this cause that is vital to the integrity of American life. As one of the most forceful orators of the conservative stage, Dr. Alan Keyes delivers an impassioned message to pro-life supporters at a gathering called the Festival for Life. If one has the moral value of zero, then a million times zero is still zero. A million times nothing. Drawing a striking parallel between the loss of so many innocent lives and an erosion of the very foundations of our freedom. When are we going to wake up and realize, as our founders did, that in everything we do, we do not just affect ourselves, but we affect the blessings of liberty for our posterity. Key's visit here is a touchstone and a rallying cry at an event organized by pro-life activist and former South Dakota lawmaker Gordon Howey, a man eager to see the scourge of abortion ended in America and willing to do the hard work it takes to see it through. Yes, And we're sending a message of hope, renewal and restoration. We believe South Dakota can lead the way in America to be the first abortion-free state. And we're praying that this will be a mighty tsunami that will cross this country to remove the blight of abortion on our land. <laughs> I think we can go. And so, even on a cold and windy day in May, Alan Keyes, Gordon Howey, and CareNet Pregnancy Center Director Stacy Woolman lead the march, carrying the message they hope will spread across the land. What we want is this to be a spark for life that will take out the blight of abortion, that will end the, the destruction that's been uh, uh, imposed on mothers. Rallying hardy souls to brave the cold, strengthened by the horn blasts from those who agree the curse of abortion must be stopped. It's good. I, I've seen very few people who have given us uh, negative signs. Most people uh, seem to be for us, and it's a good thing. It's encouraging. From first-time sign bearers, proud to lift young voices to speak for the unborn, to grizzled pro-life veterans like this man whose heavy-duty homemade sign is testimony to 200 days a year of doing exactly this. He's just happy on this day to have some company for a change. For once, yes. <laughs> yes, really. How, fre how frequently have you been out here doing this? Well, I go over, over to the MD building on, on, uh, up by the cathedral, and I try to make it every day, but the what bad weather, it's uh, maybe, maybe a two- or three-day-a-week process. All speaking with a voice they say can only grow louder with time. As new generations come to realize a danger to any innocent life is a danger to all. We must stand up for what we believe in. And if we don't, it's at our own peril. I'm here for our posterity in our country. I'm hoping that a revival breaks loose out of South Dakota and it changes the face of this nation. Remembering that a nation that kills its most vulnerable citizens stands little chance of maintaining protection for anyone else and is guilty of tearing down the most essential of the rights we all share. Chad Olson, SOS TV News.